السلام علیکم پروگرام امبیسی روڈ میں خوش آمدید ناظرین آج ہمارے اس پروگرام میں ہمارے مہمان ہیں پاکستان میں روس کے سفیر جناب الیکزی دیدوف اور الیکزی دیدوف کے بارے میں میں یہ آپ کو بتاتا چلوں کہ وہ اردو زبان بھی جانتے ہیں اور وہ ایک منجے ہوئے سفارتکار ہیں پاکستان اور روس کے تعلقات ایک عرصے تک کشیدہ رہے خاص طور پر جب سوویٹ فورسز افغانستان کے اندر داخل ہوئی اور وہ ایک پورے دس سال تک ہمارے تعلقات میں کشیدگی رہی لیکن افغانستان کا وہ مسئلہ ختم ہو چکا ہے اور دنیا بدل رہی ہے ایک نیا عالمی نظام وجود میں آ رہا ہے اور پرانے رقیب اور پرانے مخالفین جو ہیں ایک دوسرے کے قریب آ رہے ہیں پاکستان اور روس دونوں اس کوشش میں کہ وہ ماضی کو بلا کر ماضی کی تلخیوں کو بلا کر ایک نئے سفر کا آغاز کریں تو ہم آج سفیر صاحب سے پوچھتے ہیں کہ کیا پاکستان اور روس ایک نئے سفر کا آغاز کرنے والے ہیں یا کر چکے ہیں اور آئندہ مستقبل میں دونوں ملکوں کے تعلقات جو ہیں وہ کس طرح ہوں گے امبیسٹر تھینک یو ویری مچ فار جوائننگ اس ان دس پروگرام تھینک یو سو مچ خواتین و حضرات السلام علیکم تھینک یو ویری مچ امبیسٹر پاکستان اینڈ رشیا ہیو ہیڈ اسٹرینڈ ریلیشنس فار اے لانگ پیریڈ آف ٹائم Uh, this is the Cold War period, and both were considered as enemical to each other or rivals to each other. But now things have changed, both regionally and globally. Uh, do you think that the movement for a long-standing positive relationship has started, or we have to go a long way now? Uh, well, actually... Uh, I would not like to uh, simplify my assessments of the history of relations between uh, Pakistan and the Soviet Union and respectively Pakistan and Russia. Uh, for example, uh, they have a very rich history. Quite recently we celebrated 70th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between two countries, which uh, fell exactly on May 1st, 1948. So now it's 71st 70, year yes. already. Uh, I would say that uh, the relations between Pakistan and the Soviet Union were uh, permanently negative. Uh, we have uh, some uh, very good periods, uh, political interaction and uh, economic cooperation in 1960s uh, during uh, Field Marshal Ayub Khan rule, uh, then in later period in the beginning of 70s, Uh, during uh, Prime Minister uh, Zulfikar Ali uh, Bhutto's rule. Actually, these years were uh, marked by uh, exercising of a large-scale economic project uh, in Pakistan, like uh, Karachi Steel Mill, like uh, Gudu and Javshoro electric power plants, uh, etc. Unfortunately, uh, after that, uh, due to known reasons, our relations were strained for many years. And as you are well aware, in uh, the very end of uh, 1991, uh, the Soviet Union uh, disassembled. And uh, uh, there was quite a long period of, uh, I should say, uh, mutual ignorance in uh, relations, mutual indifference, because uh, we in Russia were engaged in settlement of our internal problems because they were uh, inevitable uh, uh, due to a uh, new formation of the country, uh, due to split of the Soviet Union, uh, that's natural problems. Uh, some of uh, the countries which emerged faced uh, grave problems, such less grave. Uh, our problems uh, were uh, mostly in the field of economy. Uh, as for uh, Pakistan, uh, there was uh, an issue of uh, civil war in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, but uh, after the decade in the very end of 90s, uh, there was a period of uh, resurrection of this tie, starting from a visit of Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to Russian Federation in 1999. And since this time, uh, these relations are progressing. Uh, they are progressing in a political field, in a economic field. I think we can speak about it in detail during the uh, interview. Yes. Uh, so uh, the trend is definitely positive and uh, I think that uh, our main task, our main challenge 
is uh, to maintain this very good dynamics which we can now observe in the area of Pakistani-Russian cooperation. Uh, Ambassador, do you think that uh, it is the regional situation and the global situation that is emerging uh, before our eyes? And that situation has compelled both Pakistan and Russia to mend fences between themselves and improve the relationship? Uh, well, I think there are uh, two aspects of this. First aspect that the relations with Pakistan, bilateral cooperation with your country, has uh, its own uh, independent uh, value uh, for the Russian Federation. Secondly, of course, we consider uh, Pakistan uh, our important partner, not only regional-wise, but uh, in more uh, wider dimension. And of course, we cannot uh, just uh, ignore the uh, factors, regional factors, which are uh, forcing uh, our two countries closing to uh, one another. This is, uh, unfortunately, the character of this uh, factor is uh, more negative. Uh, this is mostly challenges and threats which are, uh, which emerged and uh, which are becoming uh, stronger and uh, stronger. Uh, not only in the region but outside the region as well, they influence other regions uh, and uh, it is not a matter of the years, it's already a matter of decades. Uh, what I mean, this is first of all a uh, terrorism issue, that is a uh, drugs issue, that is a uh, issue of organized crime, uh, the issue of uh, protection of regional stability and these are factors which are bringing our countries closer because now it is uh, absolutely clear that uh, however strong is uh, one or other countries it cannot cope with these challenges and threats independently without relying on the assistance from uh, other countries other partners it is only through concerted efforts these uh, challenges and threats uh, must be uh, may be tackled and, uh, of course, this is a story which uh, brings together, of course, not only Russia and Pakistan. It uh, urges the need of consolidation of all the countries of the region and beyond the region. And we see the example of this consolidation and many manifestations like uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, by the way, I should uh, congratulate uh, our uh, Pakistani colleague uh, the, with for the becoming event that, a full yes, member of SCO. The, yes, for the very uh, well, actually, Pakistan and India became full fledged members last year in Astana. Yes. But this year, for the first time in Sindao summit of uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, uh, Pakistan and India they uh, took part in it as a full fledged member. Last year, they were. Uh, received the states and today they uh, started to, so to speak, enjoy the status. The issue of terrorism is undoubtedly a common challenge to Russia and Pakistan. Uh, on this front, on the front of terrorism, do you think that both countries are satisfactorily cooperating with each other? Uh, well, uh, I think so. I think so because we have uh, not a single platform uh, for cooperation uh, against terrorism. Uh, we have some bilateral formats and have multilateral ones. Speaking about bilateral, there is a uh, well interagency uh, working group of uh, Pakistan and Russia which are meeting, which are uh, consulting each other. Uh, from the Russian side, uh, it is group is led by uh, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Sarah Molotov. Uh, from uh, Pakistani side, uh, it was uh, led by, uh, I think, really uh, brilliant uh, diplomat, uh, very skilled uh, and a very respected person, uh, additional secretary, uh, Mrs. Tasni Maslam, uh, who retired in May. Uh, we strongly hope that yes. uh, the new candidacy for uh, this uh, working group from Pakistani side uh, will be found soon. Uh, this is one aspect. Uh, second aspect so, is... So many, many meetings have taken place between these two groups? They're regular. I haven't, uh, to be frank, I haven't counted them. They're regular. Uh, well, I cannot say precise number, but something six or seven meetings. Meetings have taken place. Like this, yes. Right. Uh, it's a regular mechanism. Then, uh, as for a multilateral aspect, it is, uh, of course, 
cooperation in the frameworks of uh, regional anti-terrorist structure of Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization. And uh, Pakistan demonstrates its will to cooperate there to uh, make its uh, contribution in the effective work of this uh, structure. Uh, we found understanding from Pakistani side uh, in uh, our in implementing our idea of converting this regional structure to the universal center of tackling region, tackling regional threats. Uh, then there are uh, other uh, aspects of anti-terrorist cooperation, like. Uh, say in the frameworks of uh, Moscow uh, format on Afghanistan uh, because uh, the cooperation on the Afghanistan issue, the terrorism issue is a uh, uh, well inevitable component part of it. Uh, in practical terms, uh, well, uh, there are some uh, aspects of our military cooperation which are also connected with terrorism issue because uh, our military cooperation is mostly aimed at aim at tackling terrorist threat. Uh, but in Afghanistan is a country which has been in the grips of terrorism and extremism and militancy for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And this is the country which is impacting the regional uh, mm -hmm. countries as well. Pakistan is one of them. And uh, I think Russia too is worried about uh, what's happening in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So, is there any move uh, to stabilize Afghanistan, uh, mutually cooperating with each other, and to bring peace in that country? Mm. Well, uh, it is a very complicated issue. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we can fix that uh, the situation in Afghanistan is gradually deteriorating. Uh, partly it is in connection uh, with the fact that uh, many uh, Islamic State Daesh uh, militants, they relocated from Middle East to the uh, Afghanistan, uh, mostly to the north of this country, bordering with the, uh, uh, our uh, allies, Republic of the Central Asia. Together with Pakistan, we share uh, the principal approach to the settlement of uh, Afghanistan issue. First of all, that there is no alternative for diplomatic, peaceful diplomatic uh, solution of uh, the Afghanistan problem. And of course, this problem should be Afghan-led and Afghan-owned. Unfortunately, we see the efforts of uh, certain uh, world powers to uh, ignore this uh, evident thing, to rely on uh, their force, uh, which uh, we cannot understand uh, even logically because you know, there were many attempts to settle Afghanistan issue by force. And uh, we know that foreign troops uh, are there, uh, led by the United States from 2001. It is already uh, 17 years, and uh, we have some... And they have not been able to bring peace. There. Yes, we have certain impression that they want to perpetuate their uh, presence there. But when they, their number was... Uh, much more than 100,000 troops. Even at those times, they cannot make any uh, decisive progress. How they hope to do it now when their strong strength is less, very difficult to say. So but, that's Master, why we insist on political diplomatic solution right. of but this issue. The, the big powers present there, particularly the United States of America, they have been uh, uh, giving this indication that they are ready to start dialogue with Taliban and other militants in Afghanistan. And, you know, they started uh, moving on that track and then retracted, and they went back on that. And they again started using... Yes, yes, they using. retracted it. Yes. I, we strongly appreciate uh, Pakistani efforts in uh, settling Afghanistan issue. Uh, when uh, this uh, quadrilateral format was launched and the first uh, meeting uh, in Mari took place, Unfortunately, this process was spoiled uh, with the killing of Mullah Mansour, Mansour who was ready Koita, to uh, yes. negotiate. And since the time this uh, format is uh, not working, America continues relying on tanks. They uh, do not want to uh, speak to uh, Taliban. They prefer that a government in Kabul uh, should be uh, the site uh, of this process. Uh, 
uh, of course, uh, government in Kabul is the side of this process, but uh, actually uh, we should uh, just proceed from uh, realities and uh, maybe the uh, dialogue, uh, direct dialogue uh, between uh, United States, Taliban will be helpful and much, at least it is much, much better than a pure uh, reliance on uh, force. Yes. As for uh, our uh, joint efforts with Pakistan, uh, we are cooperating in the framework of uh, Moscow format. You know, it was formed by three countries, uh, that's Russia, Pakistan, and China. Now it comprises uh, such uh, regional forces as uh, Iran, India, uh, Central Asian republics. Uh, the United States were also invited to participate, that they uh, declined this invitation. Well, that's up to them, but I think that's uh, not instrumental for the cause of peace. Secondly, uh, Mr. secondly uh, uh, there we, is, we will we'll take a short break here. Uh, and let me finish okay, book please. just one to phrase. Please. Secondly, uh, a work of a very important format that is working group Shanghai Cooperation Organization Afghanistan was restarted recently and uh, the last meeting of this group took uh, place uh, in Beijing in May. So this is also a very important format for cooperation on Afghanistan issues. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. We'll take a short break and then we'll continue this okay. discussion. Nazi Naik Mukhtar break late in break Wapsi Kebad on Pakistan may Ruske Safi Janab Alexi Didov say گفتگو کا سلسلہ جاری رکھیں گے اور ہم بتا رہے ہیں کہ پاکستان اور روس کے درمیان دہشت گردی کے خاتمے کے لیے تعاون جو ہے اس میں وسط پیدا ہو رہی ہے اور دونوں ممالک جو ہیں دہشت گردی کے خلاف کئی فورمز کے اوپر تعاون کر رہے ہیں ویلکم بیک ہماری بات چیت جاری ہے پاکستان میں روس کے سفیر سے وہ ہمیں بتا رہے ہیں کہ پاکستان اور روس کن کن شعب میں آپ اس میں تعاون کر رہے ہیں ایمیسٹر یو منشنڈ کوپریشن بیٹوین پاکستان اور افغانستان ویڈ ریگارڈ ٹو ٹیرلزم وٹ رول کین شنگائی کوپریشن آرگنیزیشن پلے بکاز پاکستان از نو ای ممبر ایز یو منشنڈ فل فلیجڈ ممبر آف ایس سی او سو Can SCO also play its important role to eliminate or at least to curb terrorism and militancy in this region? Well, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, there is a structure inside the SCO that is regional anti-terrorist structure. Uh, becoming the full-fledged uh, member of SCO, Pakistan uh, may enjoy uh, and it may use the full potential of uh, this organization, access to the information, exchange of experience, maybe some planned, uh, commonly planned actions. So uh, this is uh, really, really a very good tool to tackle a terrorism issue. And uh, Pakistan uh, is a country which can not only take from this, but it should only give to this. Because uh, I think it is a unique experience of the country in holding uh, such large-scale counter-terrorist operations as uh, Zarbe, Zarbe Azben, 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 It's uh, well, uh, very difficult, very lengthy operations uh, for, which, for which we are witnessing uh, now uh, definite success and we very highly estimate and the uh, efforts of Pakistan and uh, all the losses which uh, Pakistan suffered during this. But the result is visible. The level of terrorism uh, in the country it, uh, considerably went down. Uh, the atmosphere is uh, much, much calmer than in a previous year. So this is a unique experience uh, which Pakistan may uh, share as well with, with other, other neighboring countries. Of, yes, uh, Shanghai uh, Cooperation uh, Organization. Ambassador, you earlier mentioned that uh, US and some other powers, they want to remain in Afghanistan for a long period of time. And this is also a perception which is shared by so many other countries. 
So what is the objective of the U.S. and its allies to stay in Afghanistan for a long period of time? You know, uh, from ancient times, uh, Afghanistan was an important hub in the crossroads of various uh, passes and uh, uh, various just uh, uh, played an important role in uh, the political balance uh, throughout the regional and beyond this. And Afghanistan is uh, a very lucrative place from the point of view of projecting the force to other regions. If you can look that uh, to the east of Paki Afghanistan is Pakistan, further India. To the north, it is Central Asia. To the west, it is Iran. You know, it is uh, situated in a very center of this very sensitive and very it's, important it's region. Geographic location is very important. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, secondly, uh, they have uh, created for this 18 years, they created uh, infrastructure. This, uh, well, uh, I cannot count uh, well how many military bases the uh, United States have there. I think that is many, many bases uh, of them. Uh, there were only uh, nine uh, very big bases. Part of them is uh, given to Afghani forces, part of them are still being used by the uh, United States and uh, its allies. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, we uh, cannot trace uh, any uh, factor or any signal that these countries want to uh, leave Afghanistan. Their practical steps, they are uh, rather directed to uh, remain there for uh, uh, much longer time. There, there is an impression that the U.S. and its allies, they also intend to uh, make use or exploit the natural resources of Central Asia and other countries to their advantage. Mm -hmm. Is that, do you agree to that? Uh, well, this is also the factor of uh, economic influence uh, to put this uh, just paths of uh, traffic of uh, natural resources uh, under uh, control and uh, uh, but I think that uh, in this in this respect uh, the more important thing is uh, political military dimension than economic one though of course they are trying to uh, strengthen their influence economic influence but uh, actually uh, the economic influence is uh, also an important tool in uh, forcing uh, one or other uh, entity to uh, follow the uh, premediated course. So that's also understandable. But of course, the uh, uh, ultimate goal is pol military political influence. Coming to Pakistan, uh, Russia, military cooperation. Uh, there were high level visits of Pakistani military leadership. Uh, to Moscow and some officers, some high-level uh, dignitaries, they also came to Pakistan and this cooperation is going on. Uh, do you think that this will further improve in the days to come, in the years to come and what will ultimately emerge out of it? Well, uh, you know, it's a relatively new area of our cooperation. Uh, the start of it was given uh, in the end of 19, sorry, 2014 uh, by the visit of our Minister of Defense, Mr. Shaigu, uh, during which uh, the agreement on military cooperation was signed. So since this time it uh, acquired quite a, a multifaceted character. Uh, the only thing which unites all our efforts, it is uh, it is anti-terrorist dimension because the aim of our military cooperation is finally to uh, fight against terrorism. So uh, I can give you some examples. Uh, for example, we have this uh, joint trainings, anti-terrorist trainings. The first one took place in Charat uh, in 2016. The next one, uh, the same type, took place in our Caucasus Mountains. Uh, in 2017. This year we, have, we will have uh, similar exercises but much a larger scale. They will be in autumn uh, in Ural Mountains under the ages of uh, SCO. It is called uh, Peace Mission 2018 uh, where uh, for the first time both Pakistani and Indian troops 
will be uh, participating. Secondly, uh, we have very good visits of uh, Pakistan military leaders like uh, Chief of Army Staff General Bajwa, his predecessor Rahil Sharif yes. to Moscow. General Bajwa visited Moscow recently, it was in the month of April. Uh, he met his uh, counterpart, Mr. Uh, Solukov, he met our Chief of General Staff, Mr. Gerasimov. There was a very good meeting, uh, I should say cordial meeting, uh, between uh, General Bajwa and our Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Lavrov. Uh, then there was a visit of uh, our uh, senior military leadership led by General Istrakov, uh, and Pakistani side provided opportunity for them to visit uh, areas uh, bordering Afghanistan, those areas which were uh, Clear liber cleared from yes. terrorists. And uh, finally, uh, we have some regular events in uh, Russia, uh, annual events. Uh, it is called uh, Moscow Conference on uh, Security. Uh, that is a multilateral event, and your Minister of uh, Defense at those time it was uh, Havaja Asif. Asif yeah, he, he, there, yes. he regularly participated there. Uh, and of course, the change of experience, uh, well, exchanges on maybe lower levels of just uh, military yes. establishment. But must, so uh, it goes, it develops uh, quite dynamically to my mind and definitely it will continue to develop. Pakistan has been uh, trying to get uh, military hardware uh, from Russia for a long period of time. For some time there were some constraints, but now that the relations are improving, Pakistan is looking for uh, some military uh, equipment like helicopters and aircraft. Well, the helicopter deal is done already. It's su successful. It's in the implemented. It's it closed. It's already done. It's closed. Yes, it's done. Yes. Uh, as for uh, other deals, there are uh, some negotiations, uh, and of course, I uh, would not like to forecast the result of this. When it is done, it is done. But uh, of course, the process uh, continues, and it is also uh, one of the uh, dimensions of our aspects of our uh, cooperation against terrorism in a broader sense. And this, neither our military cooperation nor our military technical cooperation is directed against any third countries. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but Ambassador, uh, will uh, Russia, which is so advanced in uh, manufacturing of weapons and defense weapons, missile system, etc., uh, will it share uh, some technology with Pakistan or at some stage can transfer some technology to Pakistan? Well, as I mentioned, we cannot foresee okay. the development, you know. Uh, let's uh, start with some uh, simple deals and then come to the more complicated level. Right. The other aspect is the economic cooperation. You mentioned that both countries are trying to enhance economic cooperation uh, between themselves. So Pakistan is more interested in energy because Pakistan uh, suffers from energy crisis. Mm. Uh, in what way uh, Russia can help us? And we were also expecting that Russia will invest in this north-south gas pipeline, mm -hmm. but then we didn't hear anything. Yes, yes. So uh, first of all, uh, regarding the, our uh, economic uh, ties, economic cooperation, uh, there is a continuing boost in this area. Uh, for example, uh, last year uh, the level of uh, our uh, trade uh, turnover between countries grew uh, about uh, 33 percent and uh, last year it was 541 million dollars. Uh, well, uh, I think yesterday I got uh, data on the uh, first four months of the current year and I was deeply impressed uh, by the fact that our trade turnover uh, in comparison with the similar period last year. of the last year, it grew about twofold. You can imagine five million four uh, forty hundred dollars for the whole year, for the whole last year and about 400 million dollars for only four months 
of the current it's years. It's a great improvement. Yes, it's a great improvement and uh, we should uh, make our best efforts uh, to try to uh, uh, keep these dynamics. Uh, the important role, uh, I think, uh, belong to our chairman of the, uh, our intergovernmental commission, Mr. Mantorov and uh, Mr. Das Girhan, who just uh, managed to give impetus to our relations. You know, Mr. Das Girhan, he was chairman from the Pakistani yes. side for our commission. Uh, it is the first aspect. Second aspect is not so satisfactory. It is, uh, it concerns uh, implementation of projects. As for the project of uh, North-South Pipeline, uh, there are uh, still negotiations on the contract concerning the technical details of the contract. Uh, well, uh, those, uh, our representatives who are directly engaged on the progress, in the process, they are telling me that uh, there is a very good chance to come to the common ground on these technical details. And uh, as soon as it is done, as soon as it is done, uh, you will definitely uh, be, uh, become aware about it. Some practical work should start. I'm uh, personally monitoring this and uh, maybe if it is not uh, just mentioned in public, but this grassroots work, work on the working level is continuing uh, quite actively. Uh, then uh, there was a very, uh, I should say, uh, big achievement uh, of when uh, on 17th of May uh, the government of Pakistan uh, finally arrived at the decision uh, to uh, approve uh, agreement on regulation of our mutual obligations, financial obligations, which backs to the Soviet Union times. Actually, this uh, unsettlement of this issue, it uh, was an obstacle on the way of development of relations for about quarter century. Because uh, uh, the, actually what is the issue, the, some of our state assets, they were free frozen Pakistani banks because of this unsettlement of events. And when uh, the state assets are frozen, uh, according to our legislation, the state, our state, cannot make state investments. Only mm -hmm. private investments. Right. As soon as it is settled, and it is I settled, hope, then the, the I way hope will be open. We are now, you know, we are now expecting the official intimation about it from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. The decision uh, was taken by the government more than a month ago, so uh, we expect that soon we shall receive some kind of notification from the ministry that Pakistani side is ready to sign this document. We informed about our readiness to sign it uh, more than a year ago, I think even two years ago. And as soon as a uh, document is signed, one of the main uh, obstacles on the way of will, be, will removed. be removed finally. Yes. Then uh, we expect Pakistani side to complete uh, intergovernmental uh, or internal procedures to put in action uh, the, our interstate agreement on uh, the providing of uh, LNG to Pakistan, which was signed uh, last October, we already did it. Uh, then uh, there are some other projects which are on, on the table, uh, like uh, Jamshoro power stations, uh, I mean renovation, uh, etc. Uh, then uh, this project of uh, shore pipeline, uh, many, many projects. Right. Thank you, Ambassador. We'll take a short break and then we'll continue this discussion. Nazin Ek Mukhsar break let him break if Apsi Kebaz on Pakistan by Ruske Safi Janab Alexi Didov say Uftuka Silsila Jari Rakhenge. Welcome back. Mari Bati Jari a Pakistan by Ruske Safi say. On energy side, there was a time in 60s, as, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. during a Yub Khan period of time, the uh, OGDC, Oil and Gas Development Organization, uh, Corporation, was set up by Soviet Union. Uh, this is what my information is. But then this cooperation uh, was stalled for so many reasons, political reasons and other reasons. So your interest to find new fields of gas and oil in Pakistan can be revived? Uh, well, uh, there are some uh, 
organizations uh, from Russia, like uh, Rosgeologia, uh, which are uh, working in Pakistan. Uh, hopefully, they will uh, sooner or later start uh, their uh, practical thing in uh, just uh, research of the uh, land deposit, so to speak. Maybe it will not be particular gas, maybe it will be another uh, minerals, uh, whatever. But uh, this aspect is also covered. Well, beside this, we have uh, a company Himash, which uh, exercises project on uh, building uh, an oil refinery in the city of Kohat. So mm -hmm. this is also moving. Uh, but the fact that uh, OGDC was founded, well, it's in use for me. Right. Uh, Mr. Uh, the other issue is the... But in any case, OGDC remains one of our main partners. Yes. Uh, Russia also, Soviet Union also, uh, helped Pakistan set up its first steel mill, Karachi mm -hmm. steel mill. And this steel mill is not in good shape now. Uh, and it's not very uh, lucrative, it is not productive, it is faced with so many problems. Uh, can Russia help revive this huge project, uh, the Karachi well, Steel Well, uh, actually we expressed our readiness to uh, participate in uh, revival of this very huge uh, project. project. Uh, the, you know, the problem is that uh, first uh, Pakistani government should uh, arrive at the final decision about the fate of this uh, Pakistan Karachi steel it, it mill. It was privatized. Privat well, you know, uh, some people want to privatize it, but when I uh, speak to uh, people from Sindh, to local people, they are against privatization. So therefore the decision is not taken. And it is uh, very difficult to define how particularly we may be helpful. Whether it is renovation, whether it is partial sale, whether it will be construction from the uh, zero level. First of all, uh, Pakistani government should define these principal things. Right. And after that, we can uh, just calculate how we can help in it. But it is Pakistani installation and it is for Pakistani government uh, to uh, define what will be with this uh, installation in principle. Because so far, uh, we can observe that uh, there are many trends, uh, many ideas, but uh, so far, uh, nothing final. Uh, you mentioned the growing trade between Pakistan and Russia, and you mentioned the figures. These are very encouraging figures. Uh, so in which areas do you think Pakistan and Russia can expand their trades? Well, it's uh, various areas. Various areas from the Pakistani side, it is a production of goods. Uh, from our side, it's uh, grain fertilizers, uh, other aspects, uh, some techniques, machinery. So, uh, you know, our task is to uh, disclose this potential in full of our trade and to keep these dynamics. In the field of agriculture, uh, back in 60s, 70s, I think Russia also helped Pakistan improve its uh, farm production and probably they shared some technology mm. uh, with Pakistan. Mm. Will that happen again or can that happen again? Well, why not? Why not? You know, there is a mechanism of uh, intergovernmental commission from uh, trade and uh, for trade and technological cooperation, and this is a very pla good platform uh, to discuss the areas of cooperation. If, uh, if uh, there is a request from Pakistani side, uh, well, of course, we shall uh, consider it and answer positively what we can do for this. Uh, I uh, don't know when is the next meeting. Uh, last one took place uh, in the end of the last year in Moscow. Uh, but taking into consideration the situation in Pakistan, that uh, the Election elections the are ahead, then mm. there will be issue of formation of the government. I don't know how long uh, it will take to appoint uh, heads of this intergovernmental commission. Uh, but anyway, uh, next meeting, uh, I think, will take place in uh, Islamabad, if not uh, this year, but uh, probably the next year. And of course, Pakistani side, uh, they are free to uh, express uh, their requests, requirements, 
their uh, wishes, uh, how they see uh, the future of this cooperation, what additional areas uh, they would like to uh, they would like to engage in this process. That's why it, it exists. Uh, in Soviet days, a lot of Pakistani students would go to study there uh, in Lumumba University mm -hmm. and other institutions. But ever since the Russian Federation has emerged, uh, you know, uh, is there any cooperation between Pakistan and Russia in the field of education can yes it continues uh, pakistani students may be not in such great numbers as previously but uh, they visit russia uh, we give uh, issue several hundred students visas uh, per year so this process continues of course it needs further development but uh, we cannot say that it is stalled it goes on but uh, in, in, in the field of textile, for instance, Pakistan is well known for its textile industry in Pakistan. As well, been textile, it was and is uh, actually one of the main articles of our trade and uh, trade exchange. Uh, the issue is that uh, I haven't uh, noticed specific growth on these figures because uh, actually the uh, markets are there. Uh, and uh, there is still a big volume, but uh, without uh, big dynamics, so to speak. Right. But volume is big. By the way, it's closer to textile, actually. We have now a world championship, and it is played by uh, Pakistani footballs. It's being used in the fo yes, yes, world uh, football. Uh, yes, yes, Sialkot yes. made. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, Pakistan, Russia also wanted to import uh, some other agriculture produced from Pakistan, like potatoes and wheat, etc., maybe some other products? So well, uh, I don't know about wheat, uh, but uh, as for potatoes, we import Pakistani potatoes. But what about the fruit? Fruits? Yes. Well, uh, fruits is a, a well, separate issue. Mm. Actually, if we take dry fruits, it's uh, more or less okay with this. But fresh fruits, you know, there is a kind of dilemma. First of all, if we take a wonderful mango, there is no alternative uh, for the mango trade than to transport it by plane. Mm. And so you can count the price. Because it's very, very, very expensive. Very expensive. It cannot be transported by sea. Uh, well, as for uh, other uh, fruits like uh, quinoa, I think they are uh, easier transportable. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Today, this program, you have heard Pakistan from Russian Minister General Alexei Dydov. He has spoken about Pakistan and Russia's relations and the relationship between Pakistan and Russia. He said that Pakistan and Russia are fighting against the violence. Pakistan and Russia are fighting against the violence. Pakistan and Russia are fighting against the violence. Pakistan and Russia are fighting against the وہ آپس میں تعاون کر رہی ہے جوائنٹ ایکسرسائزز ہو رہی ہیں پاکستان شنگائی تعاون تنظیم کا ممبر بن چکا ہے اور اس پلیٹ فارم سے پاکستان اور روس اور چین تینوں دہشتگردی خلاف تعاون کر رہے ہیں اس سال مزید ایکسرسائزز ہوں گی جو کہ دہشتگردی کے خلاف ایک بڑی کامیابی ہوگی انہوں نے یہ بھی بتایا کہ پاکستان اور روس کے درمیان گیس اور تیل کے شعبے میں بھی تعاون جاری ہے اور اس کے علاوہ دوسرے شعبوں میں بھی دونوں ممالک جو ہیں ایک دوسرے کے قریب آ رہے ہیں اسی کے ساتھ یہ پروگرام ختم ہوتا ہے جاوید صدیق کو اجازت دیجئے خدا حافظ بستر تینکیو ویری بہت شکریہ بہت شکریہ آپ کا تینکیو تینکیو سو مچ تینکیو